So in this video, I'm going to explain you the types of chemical reactions. You have gone through the types of chemical reaction. So in this slide, I'm going to explain you the two types of chemical reactions. There are four, but we'll discuss only two. Combination reaction and displacement reaction. Now let's look at combination reaction. So what is the meaning of combination reaction? A reaction in which two or more substances, that is uh, elements or maybe compounds, combine together to form a new substance. This is known as a combination reaction. For example, A plus B. What does it give together A, B? Still forget about this C. Now if you add three elements, A plus B plus C, it will give A, B, C. So this is in the combined form. So this is known as your Combi uh, combination reaction. So this is the general equation, the formula to remember. You can even write A plus B, that is A, B or R plus S, R is. So what is R? R is your reactants, generally two elements or two compounds. So sometimes it can be MgO or Mg. So the product will be always a single product, that is only one compound will be formed here. So example is out here. Magnesium plus oxygen that gives you magnesium oxide. So this is an example of combination reaction. Now look, two different elements combined together to form one element. So the chemical equation, I will explain you in the next video. Now let's look at formation of magnesium nitrate. The formula of magnesium nitrate is Mg3N2. So how does it form? Three magnesium, look, one, two, three. Now these circles are here. These larger circles are here, magnesiums. So three magnesiums, they combine with two uh, nitrogen. These are two atoms of nitrogen. All they combine together to form Mg3N2. So this is the way how it is formed. So I'm going to show you in the equation. So now we are going to look at how magnesium and nitrogen combines together to form a magnesium nitride. So this is our magnesium, so Mg. So we have nitrogen and so this is unstable, so they are going to form a covalent bond. That's why we write N2. N2 stands for gas. For example, hydrogen gas, it's, you have to write H2. If it is oxygen, then we write O2. Okay, the reaction. So we write in this way. So magnesium and nitrogen is uh, reacting with each other. So it forms magnesium nitrate. Now, this time I'm going to write over here Mg, which stands for magnesium. And nitrate, I'm just going to write only N. So in order to write the formula. Now magnesium's atomic number out here is uh, 12. Okay, so this is your atomic structure. So two in the first orbit, eight in the second orbit, and two electrons in the outermost orbit. So always remember the law of octet. Octet means that it must have eight electrons in the outermost orbit. But here there's two electrons here, so that's why it's a metal. So magnesium is going to lose two electrons to form a bond. So for that reason, we are going to write over your magnesium. So it's going to lose two electrons in order to be stable. So we'll write over here two plus. Now this is your nitrogen's atomic structure, which is a 7. Atomic structure is 7, so it means in the first orbit 2 electrons and 5 electrons in the outermost orbit. So the law of octet means it must need 8 electrons. So here, this nitrogen requires 3 electrons. So for that reason, I'm going to write over here nitrogen. So it is less, right? 3 electrons less. That's why we are going to write over here minus 3. So you can check my previous videos how to uh, write the chemical formulas. So you can take this tree that is your radical here and don't write the charge just to write only three just below this uh, magnesium and this two right below this nitrogen so now we have so I'm going to write over here with this arrow so now we have mg and just below this magnesium it is three so we write here three and this nitrogen has two just below this nitrogen below this nitrogen is two so we are right two so this is the formula of magnesium nitride so how to balance it so if you look at the right hand side, so we have three magnesiums on the right hand side. You can check it out over here. So we have three magnesiums, but on the left hand side, we have only one. So here we add just three. So here it will become three magnesium. And nitrogen, what do we have nitrogen here on the right hand side? We have two nitrogens. So two is already here. So this is how it is balanced. So how to write the balanced form? So overall reaction will look like this. So three magnesium plus nitrogen N2 will give Mg3 N2. So this is the balanced form. So this is how combination reaction looks. So we here we have uh, two. So here we have three magnesium look, and uh, two nitrogen. They combine to give one compound. Look. So we have A. Let's assume this is uh, magnesium is A, and this nitrogen is B. So we have two different elements, and these together are combined to form AB. So this is our combination reaction.
So we are going to look at uh, more examples for this combination reaction. So examples of combination reaction, you know, when you burn a paper, what happens? It burns only in, in the presence of oxygen. So when carbon burns in presence of oxygen, it forms carbon dioxide. So look, this is the example for a combination reaction. Look, two different elements, they combine together to form one compound here. Like similarly, hydrogen plus oxygen gives water. Iron plus sulfur, iron sulfide. Hydrogen plus chlorine, HCl. So you need to balance it, magnesium and oxygen, magnesium oxide. So these are the examples of combination reaction. You can look at the textbook also. Now here we have a second one. Our examples of combination. Look, NH3 stands for ammonia. So ammonia plus HCl. There are two different elements, nitrogen and hydrogen. Do you see here? So when they combine together, they form ammonium chloride. So these are the examples. You look, calcium oxide, carbon dioxide. It forms calcium carbonate. This is also known as quicklime tuna. This is ammonia and sulfuric acid. It gives ammonium sulfate. So carbon monoxide and oxygen, look, they together form carbon dioxide. So these are the examples. So please go through it. These are the examples of combination reaction. Now next we are going to look at displacement reactions. So before we, uh, if, before I explain your displacement reaction, always remember there are two types of displacement reaction. One is single and the other one is your double. Now let's look in detail what are the differences between them. So single displacement means it is a chemical change in which a more active element displaces a less active element. Now what is the meaning of this active element, less active element? Now let's look at the reactivity series of metals. Now do you see here the list of metals? If you have already done in the previous classes, you'll understand it. If you forgot, no problem. Now let's look here. So potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron, lead, H, hydrogen. This is a gas. That's why it is in the bracket here. Copper, uh, mercury, silver, gold. And below, there is platinum also. Now this means, if you compare sodium and this potassium, now which one is more strong? Which one is more reactive? Potassium is more reactive because down the group, look, there's an arrow here the reactivity decreases. So if you compare potassium and silver, which one is the most reactive? Obviously, potassium because it is on the top. Now if you compare magnesium and aluminium, which one is more strong? Magnesium is stronger than aluminium. If you compare iron and copper, which is strong? Iron is strong. Now let's look at this uh, example of uh, single displacement. Now we have here zinc plus copper sulfate, isn't it? Zinc and copper sulfate. Now, if you look at this reaction, this is not a combination reaction. You cannot write Zn plus Cu, you cannot write it, isn't it? So, let me uh, make it more easy. Okay. Now, here, it, zinc and copper. Now, let's look at the reactivity series. Where is zinc? Zinc is here. And where is copper? Copper is below zinc, isn't it? So, which one is stronger? Zinc is stronger than copper. The reason is, it is on the top of copper. Now, can zinc replace copper? Yes, the strong elements can replace the weak ones. So the strong elements, that is the strong metal here over here, will displace this copper. Now look, the zinc and copper sulfate was there. Now, zinc being stronger will come over here and kick out this copper and it will take its place. So, zinc sulfate. Now, what happens to this copper? Now, copper is weaker than zinc. That's why it will be here alone. So this is an example of single displacement. Now we have double displacement reaction. So double displacement reaction is a chemical change in which two different atoms, do you see two different atoms, barium chloride or group of atoms, look they are also known as a group of atoms, barium and chloride or chlorine, sodium and sulfur as well as oxygen. So they are group of atoms, isn't it, are displaced by other atoms. Now, if you look here carefully, sodium and barium. Now, which one is stronger? Let's check the activity series. Now, where is sodium? Do we see here barium? Barium is not there. So, that shows that sodium is more stronger than barium. Okay. In this way, we are going to look at. So, sodium being stronger, what happens? Now, this sodium will kick out this barium 
and it will take its place here look so sodium chloride now barium will combine with this sulfate so this is the way how uh, displacement reaction works see here are some of the examples of single displacement reaction now look ab do you see a small dot orange colored dot now this orange colored dot is b so when this reaction takes place now what happens to this b now this b being stronger or which one is stronger here b will kick or this c will come over here and form a bond with this b do you see here now where is this b b has gone to the c because c is more stronger than a b so it will kick out this a now a will be alone here so some examples are here lead plus copper chloride now let's look at lead and copper which one is stronger we identify it let's look uh, check copper is out here lead is on top so lead is more stronger so what happens now lead will kick out this copper this way now we have another example for double displacement reaction look sodium sulfide and hydrochloric acid now, sodium now let's check at activity series where is sodium presented on the top now, sodium is stronger isn't it it is stronger than hydrogen why because hydrogen is below sodium it's far below look now sodium will displace hydrogen and it will take its place over here so this is the way how the reaction takes place so this is the way how it is balanced so please go through it